Turn myself around so you can see all the all the children. There's. Well, I'll start from this side so you can see them. Hi. Say hi, everyone. Oh. They look very light. They are very asleep. <laughs> They're very tired. Substitute hates me because you can't get a Do you guys know where his remote is? No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably what it looks like. Wait, wait. What? What if we make a like an 80s Hey, Miss Moore, they shut down my phone book. I can't use yeah. uh, the last one or I Excel, but I got like 535 words on my essay thing, so I should pass that. <laughs> yeah, so I should. Do you have everything <laughs> I my well, like, awesome. I yeah, so guys, um, we don't need our Chromebooks for the first part of class. We have a guest speaker. I'm currently trying to get the projector to work so that I can project him onto the board. So we're struggling. <laughs> While we're doing this, um, you know how we've been talking about the imperialism of India, right? The Indian Partition Plan. Um, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who was arguing for, what was his argument again? Arguing for what? Separation. Um, what country came out of the Partition Plan? Uh, yes. What is happening with this projector today? Um, the whole, like, Mr. E is the only one that knows how to work. Work it though. Maybe it's just a little bit. Oh, no. I not I not not Oh, it has a source. That's what I don't know. going to work for sure. I'm sorry for waiting. Yay! We did it! Wonderful. All right, so now everyone, let's give our attention to um, Mr. Metarata. He is Gabby's dad. Um, his grandfather uh, lived in, in Pakistan during the, well, what was, what is now Pakistan, during the partition and had to move into India. So he's gonna tell us about some stories that he's heard. Uh, this is actually uh, my dad, not my my granddad, but oh, okay. uh, what happened was when you, when originally you had, um, England was ruling India and then India got its independence. When they did that, uh, there was a guy named Jinnah, uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, uh, he was a Muslim. Uh, he actually really wanted to be uh, the leader of his own country. And at one point he said, I'm going to make my own country called Pakistan. And that's where the Muslims are going to be. And uh, Gandhi wanted to keep one, um, one uh, country 
said, Jenna, why don't you be leader of India and then, you know, have um, go ahead and appoint uh, various Muslims, if you want, in, in charge of the um, Indian government. And he said, no, there's Muslims on the bottom half of India, top half of India. It's not going to work. There's too much civil unrest because at this time there was a lot of internal fighting in the country between the religions, between the Muslims and the Sikhs and the Hindus. Uh, they were killing each other and it was really bad. So he said, we're going to move up north and be um, Pakistan. And he said, all, all the Muslims down, down south are going to move up north and we're going to become Pakistan. So you had this migration kind of like um, ants uh, marching uh, you know, against each other this way. And for the most part, it was, um, for the most part, it was pretty peaceful. There were little skirmishes here and there back and forth. Uh, now in my dad's family, for instance, there was 10 kids in his family. There was five brothers and five sisters and his mom and dad. So there was like 12 people in his family. And, and so I'd ask him, it's like, well, how did you decide where you lived? He said, well, when you got to India, you found a house that looked like it would fit your family. And if it was a former Muslim house, you just went in. He goes, that's what we did. We went into this house. There was a lot of blood in there and a few dead bodies. My older brothers and my dad picked up the bodies, put them outside. Uh, we cleaned up the blood and we moved in and that was our house. And so that's how my dad got his first house in India when he was 11 years old. It was a former Muslim house that um, some people had been killed. The Muslims fled. So they moved in. He goes, and I'm sure somebody in our house, what became Pakistan, uh, somebody just moved into our old house and said, yeah, this will fit our family or a couple of families, whatever, moved in and said, okay, we're taking over this. And that's how they got their house or my dad's old house. Uh, that's just what happened. You had to register with the government, letting them know, hey, I'm here now in, in this house. We're not. Muslims, we're Indians, uh, we're here. Um, and uh, I actually have the certificate still at home from 1946, I believe, um, from my, my, my dad's dad, my grandfather, when he filled out the paperwork with the Indian government. Um, every day at the border between India and, uh, and, and Pakistan, there, it's called Vada border. They have this huge ceremony where at the end of the day where the Indian flag comes down and the Pakistani flag comes down and they have these little marches and stuff and, and, and hundreds of people go to see it every day at the border um, and I got to see it a few years ago when I went to go uh, visit my dad and I talked to one of the guards at the fence line and he said I've been working this post for eight or nine years and the guy on the other side of the fence he's been working his post for eight or nine years I consider him a friend he considers me a friend we talk about our kids uh, you know we eat the same food speak the same language but if our government said we're going to war, he goes, we may have to shoot each other. He goes, but which is, you know, silly because I consider him a friend, but that's what we do. We stand at this fence line two, two feet away from each other. And, you know, what are you going to do? You stand at a fence line for two years on the other side of the fence. You're going to talk to the guy. He said, we become pretty good friends. Um, and there's a, um, a big traffic circle at the border when they do trade of goods. The Pakistani trucks come into the into this middle area. They stop. They have to unload whatever goods they have from the Pakistani trucks and put them into Indian trucks. And then they go into India uh, and same thing with Indian goods going into Pakistan. They unload the stuff from the Indian trucks into Pakistani trucks and they go into Pakistan. Now, mind you, it's the exact same truck and there's no difference between the, the trucks they're using other than these people live and work in India and these people live and work in Pakistan. But the two governments don't want each other's vehicles in each of those country for trade. So they have to go through this process at the border where they uh, exchange goods that way. And then they go back into their own countries with, with the goods. So that's kind of like how the trade works a lot in India. And that's how the uh, Pakistan or Pakistan, how it's actually pronounced Pakistan became Pakistan and India became India was Jinnah wanted to be in power and didn't want to rule India because he knew there was going to be too much bloodshed because it was majority Hindu and Sikh and it was not going to work with Muslims on either side. That was our, our main question. We were, one of the kids asked, um, we saw this video where this, they were slaughtered, like a thousand people were slaughtered mm -hmm. in one part of India. And they were asking, how do people die? Because I think it was millions of people died during the partition plan. So you- there were, there were a lot of skirmishes. I mean, for the most part, at least from what my dad experienced, it was, it was peaceful. But you got to remember, you've got hundreds of thousands of people going one way and 100,000 people going the other way. And some of them had 
you know, little babies and the babies got sick maybe or died on the, on the, on the way, or they were mad at like, the Muslims were mad at the Hindus or vice versa for having to leave their home and move. And it's not that person's fault. You know, this was a, a political conflict, but they're mad at that person. Like, you know, Oh, you're a Muslim. So, you know, you're making me move or you're a Hindu. You're making me move. So you'd have these huge battles, um, or these fights amongst just poor people who were just walking from one country to another and vice versa across on, on either side of a ditch. And they would just go into the ditch and fight. And, you know, it, it was really bad for a while. But I mean, luckily, you know, my dad's family didn't get into any skirmishes. They kind of just left it alone and just kept walking. But that's just how you did it. Do you guys have any questions? No questions? Does anyone on Zoom have questions? All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. No problem. Bye. You're very welcome. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. That was so cool.